We're in the laboratory for proteomics within the proteins and metabolites team, which is further situated within the uh, food and bio-based products group within ag research. So proteomics is basically a study of all the proteins in a sample, and you basically take that information and you try and understand what those proteins mean in relation to either the properties of that sample or maybe some of the mechanisms about why that sample is the way it is. And so what we do with metabolomics is basically the same thing, but we're looking at smaller molecules and proteins, and that reflects basically the interaction between genes and the environment. The, the instrument, the reams, we have this surgeon's knife here, we cut a sample of meat like that, creates this vapour and the vapour goes up the tube, through this tube here, into a mass spectrometer, a bit like this one, and that vapour gives us uh, something a bit like a fingerprint, and that is like a unique signature for that particular sample. And that tells us about, for example, what kind of animal it is, what that animal's been eating, and even down the track, what kind of flavor that meat will have. Well, we can take samples really of, of almost anything you can imagine. We have done a lot of meat samples. We've also done milk samples, cheese samples, different other kinds of dairy products, more or less any kind of biological sample that we can create a vapor from we can get an individual signature from that uh, sample. The fingerprint or the unique molecular signature that we're getting from the instrument, so we can tell if the sample's coming from New Zealand. We can also take that further, we can add value by saying, well, this particular meat sample or this particular dairy product has got a signature which says it's gonna be suitable for the European market, and maybe this other one's got something that's far more suitable for the Chinese market, and that means we can send the right kind of product to the right kind of place. And that really commands a lot of extra value because people want to get the best possible product. So one example of what we could do is we, we did a test where we got lamb samples from New Zealand, England and Wales, and these lamb samples are absolutely indistinguishable from each other visually, but with an hour of doing some measurements with this particular instrumentation from their molecular signatures, we can see that they were completely different. There's no trouble in differentiating between these different country of origins. It's probably due to lots of things such as different kinds of breeds of sheep, different kind of feed, and that's all coming through in the molecular signature of the meat. So using this kind of technology, we're able to guarantee to consumers that a particular product has come from a particular region of New Zealand, even a particular farm possibly, and that can be guaranteed through blockchain technology. But blockchain technology needs to have information, it needs data. And with this technology, we can populate that at the start, so we know this particular kind of molecular signature is related to this particular kind of area or region within New Zealand, to this type of animal, and this kind of agricultural system, and we can guarantee that all the way through to the consumer. This sort of idea we could take and we could make it mobile, we can go out to farms and start getting some really detailed information about, for example, animal health, or even looking at, say, the horticulture area. There's lots of different things we could use this for. This could be transformational for New Zealand agriculture, for New Zealand horticulture.